This is static guard, and this thing is throwing off uh, static electricity, especially with the glass. You put glass on there, and it turns into Van de Graaff generators. So you'll see big blue sparks coming out of, off of this, and they don't hurt. They st might sting a little bit, but little static guard really knocks those down. Doesn't take long for this thin a blade is this little gadget here and it moves all around so you just got to measure off one side so what I'll do is I'll just above the plunge I'll pick a spot where it kind of goes flat and I'll measure the height there bring it over and use the same side and I'll measure the height right there and I'm within just a couple thou and I'm going to switch to a finer grit. This is just going to have a small Scandi grind. We already got it up to the edge. Now the point, the tip, I always leave quite a bit thicker because there's just nothing there and it's a long, wide grind. That will thin out a bit, but thick point because it's a long, drawn out sharpen. So I can look down the top and see that I'm really close. This side probably needs a few more thaw off than this side. Then one other thing to look at is as it sits in the blade, it, wa it wants to be centered. Now this isn't snugged up. When we snug it all up and tighten it, the blade's gonna move over. Right now, the lock bar is pushing it over and it's there's still some looseness in there. But what we want is that blade to be dead centered right there. So Norax is an engineered AO abrasive. It's got cooling in it. It's got a really uh, uh, consistent, um, scratch pattern that's why i really like them they're also a little bit thicker than a lot of belts um, with the abrasive now they don't like water so when you grind uh, and dip your blade to cool it off uh, you got to wipe it off but it's just what it is you just get into a rhythm and, and go now these will uh, seem to last forever but a sharp belt is nice now these 100x these are measured in microns 100x the norax uh, norton Engineers will tell you that's the same as a 120. I feel it grinds somewhere around a 180 to a 200. Now these belts like high speed, high pressure, and knife makers don't normally use them that way, so they tend to, to glaze over and go dull. If that's the case, take uh, turn it up full speed, run some scrap steel across it, crumble that abrasive, and expose sharp new edges. Now this happens to be a fresher belt, so I won't need to do that. One of the things that you can look for uh, as you're progressing through the grits to whatever finish that you want, you can see how the water beads up. Now where the water clings, you're on the new grit. Where it repels, where there's increased uh, surface tension or reduced, I don't really know the physics of it, I know that's a rougher grind. So right along the edge, you can see the water's pulled back. And um, that means I'm still got, that's not the same finish as this part where the water's clinging. So I'll, I'll make a few more passes and try and get that water to grip all the way. And then once you get the whole surface area to the same grit consistency, you'll find the water just kind of sheds.
This is a cork belt. And these come in different uh, grits. This one happens to be an 800. And they'll last you a real long time. I learned this from SR Johnson when he worked with uh, Ron Loveless and SR puts incredible finishes on. Now it's a bit messy and, and so to break in uh, a cork belt, it's, it's got this shreds of cork and embedded in those cork is bits of abrasive. Really comes out and just scratches everything uh, when you get it. So when you get a brand new uh, cork belt, you have to break it in. Take a piece of scrap steel, anything, turn it up high, jam that steel in there. You know, carry on like that for uh, a few minutes until you get all the high spots knock, knocked down. Okay, so then you're gonna take some green chrome and there's different types of green chrome out there. Some are stickier than others. Uh, some work better than others. Experiment, try some. And uh, I'm gonna stand to the side. So you'll have to dress this up quite a bit until you get a bunch embedded in there and it will wear away and you'll have to redress it quite often and you'll end up all covered in green but you can take a 120 grit finish which is this is a 150 120 whatever you want to call it from those norax belts and uh, it'll turn into a mirror polish uh, without any further belts it's a really slick easy way to move fast some guys don't want to do that it's a bit messy uh, but i've started using it after a 120 pretty often just to speed things along. So there's just uh, a little bit on with the green chrome and there you can see the side I haven't touched yet and we'll get uh, that all cleaned up but it really makes short work of all of this. Alright, I had some micro bevels in there that took that out. Got everything to a nice uh, finish that I can live with. This is S30V. So we're not going to, and it's a user, it's not a safe queen, so we're going to just leave it at that finish. And that looks 5 600 grit finish, uh, almost a mirror. And it's got a decent uh, finish on it, and I can live with that. I'm going to take and uh, I'll take, I'll disassemble all of this and I'm going to do a little work on the flats and get some, I've got a bunch of different scratch patterns in there and I'm going to give that a little time here and uh, clean up the flats a little bit just from scuffs and stuff like that and uh, we're going to get ready for heat treat. Alright, there's a few scratches still left in there on the flats but uh, we'll get those out when we clean up from the heat treat patina. I do like to take it quite a bit farther than some. I find that the heat treat patina is easier to remove if you get it close to a finish that you're gonna wanna get to. Otherwise, you're really creating a lot of extra work getting that heat treat patina. I'm gonna clean up some of these profile lines uh, from profiling, pretty rough there. Gonna avoid the face. I'm not gonna touch the uh, lock bar face and uh, I'll clean up all of that and especially along there. Uh, there's still a couple spots in there but I'm gonna be okay with those. So clean her up and get it in the oven. Alright, uh, I've got the blade in heat treat right now. Um, if you want to see how that works, we've got another video on YouTube. You can go there and go to our usaknifemaker.com channel and look up the heat treat video and that'll show you what we're doing there. In the meantime, I've taken these scales and I put a countersink 
in there using a countersink tool. That's one of these. This is actually a number two socket cap screw countersink. So the outer diameter is about 159. Uh, the pilot is around 330 seconds, which happens to fit a perfect through hole. So the process is just put it in there and using these scales, it all lined up where I could just go flat like that and it countersank perfectly for us. So um, you, you will need some countersink tools to do this uh, a good job. I suppose you can, I've tried using a flattened off drill bit. It'll jump all around. You can use a drill bit, but then you'll have uh, that little cone at the bottom that will work. Uh, I just prefer a countersink. It gives a cleaner hole and a, and a flatter bottom. Uh, diameter on a screw is around 161 thou. Okay, the outer diameter. The outer diameter of this is 159, so it's a real snug fit. And you get around that by just kind of, in the drill press, just wiggling it around a little bit and give you just a, just a bit more. And this material actually gives right the hole. So we've got that screwed on. Got some screws sticking out there. Now those have already hit flush, so they're flush that way. I'm going to step over, I'll grind these flush quick, and I'll be right back. All right, so those are flush. Now we need to make some new screws for the spacer bar to get the right thickness on that. So those screws are going to go on the back side, the lock bar side, so I'm going to take these off. Usually on higher end folders, any folders really, uh, you've got construction screws and they're considered consumable. The very last thing you do before you uh, ship your knife or get it done is trade out all the screws so uh, the customer your client has fresh screws and they're not worn out from going in and out during the assembly process. So I've got that off. Now I need to three long screws and I can reuse those in the next project. I think these are going to be just long enough to grip. Won't, maybe won't have to grind anything off. But we'll take a look here. All right, sure enough, they just end up flush. If these were a bit too long, we'd grind them flush so they didn't push against this scale that we're gonna put on right now. So there's no blade in there, no pivot. What we're gonna do is profile the whole assembly and get it all lined up now. So long here, none of these edges match up. The, the tie might stick out, the scale might stick out. One liner doesn't match the other again because we just ground up to a, a scribe line. Now what we want to do is get everything flush and cleaned up while the blade's in heat treat. So we'll step over to the grinder and the small wheel and start grinding everything flush all the way around.
All right, that's uh, all flush all the way around. That's a, uh, looks like a 120. I'm gonna probably come back and hit that with a three, 400 grit. Smooth that out, get that nice and shiny. Then uh, I have to get that relief, that thumb relief. I've gotta take this scale off, grind this excess material back to where we relieved out in that titanium liner right in there. So that's all flush with that now. Once this, uh, this canvas micarta or any of those stuff starts to burn, either your speed's too fast or your belt's too worn out. See that liner's gonna, space bar's gonna turn out pretty cool with the black and gray, nice accent. So let's get a fresh 400 and uh, clean up all around that profile, get that a little shinier rather than looking so rough. I'm using two small wheel attachments. I've got the KMG horizontal here and then uh, the vertical here. And the reason is I've got different diameter wheels because there's different radius in here. This wheel is uh, a half inch and that fits in this little notch right here. Now if you don't have a small wheel, uh, you get you a round stick and sand and, and do what you need to do there. A Dremel uh, rotary uh, may get that out also, but I've got them, so we're using them just for, for speed. The thing with small wheels is they leave lots of little ripples. You, to take those ripples out, you've got to move fast and no slowing down, because anywhere you slow down or pause, or start or land or come off, that's where you're gonna leave a little ripple and it's gonna show up when you reflect in the light. So when you're finishing, you're gonna move pretty fast. Um, then uh, on this side, I'll switch to a bigger full-size eight inch wheel and I can get a lot smoother finish versus trying to get a finish with one of these. You'll just end up with a bunch of little ripples and it shows up in the light. All right, that's all flush. Now, this will ease all the way around. We'll use uh, a couple different uh, grinding attachments and a slack wheel mostly, and we're just gonna round that over. Now, we'll probably take that off because we'll run in and grind off those screws. We don't wanna do that. So we'll take these off and finish and start rounding these over on the grinder doing this and get a nice rounded over effect that way. All right, this is an 80 and a slack attachment. I've not got a lot of tension on there. I'm going to just do some rough profiling and then I'll switch to a uh, finer grit belt because I sure can't get anything done with this X weight there, but this will help me get it started.
What I was doing is checking to see the thickness on the first scale, get the thickness to match it all the way around just by eye. And then also I wanted to get the pattern, the relief pattern. Now there's a little bit extra for the lock bar and the thumb stud. So that's contoured in a little bit. But I want the same kind of looking pattern all the way around that way. Now I could leave it like this, nice grippy finish. Um, but I think I'm going to take it down to a 400 and I'll put a J-Flex on there and just kind of knock off some of the fur and all of that and make it look a little better. I didn't like how the uh, 400 was finishing on this one. Uh, so I'm going to drop it back to a 120 and I'm going to leave it at that. I do want to get some of the nicks out from that heavy X-weight belt and get all that cleaned up, and, but I think we're going to leave it at a 120. like that. It'll work. All right. So this uh, lock bar doesn't have anywhere to go. And remember, we're proud here, about 25 thou. And that lock bar doesn't have anywhere to go. So what happens is when the blade gets in there, and it just grinds in. So what you have to do is relieve on the inside of this scale give this lock bar a place to go. So I put the scale back on. We're going to mark out where that lock bar goes. We're just going to use a razor blade here to describe a line. These were a fat eighth, maybe three sixteenths. And so we've got all kinds of room in there to take some out and we're going to go all the way back here at the beginning of the relief here so we'll relieve won't have to take as much there but definitely up there it just tends to bend in and so right around this bend from there forward we'll relieve out so you can see the scribe line right there pretty clear we'll actually uh, because of that tool that we're using we'll probably end up there this Fordham tool uh, Dremel We'll work too. I want to make sure that when I push that lock bar over that it goes below the blade and the washer. The washer would be there and I want that to stick up less than that and I've got that in there. So a little practice you can get a, a halfway decent uh, look there and not bad. Uh, or you can put this in a mill and side mill that out and relieve that out That'll work too. All right, let's check the oven. Once you burn yourself once doing this without gloves, you wear gloves. You turn off the oven so the coils aren't charged.
And when I put this in the foil, I used some baby powder and rubbed that all the way around. Sometimes this foil sticks and it uses the baby powder on there. It uh, stops it from sticking. Now, this is pretty hard, so I want to be careful with it. So there it is, just out of heat treat. That talcum powder helps keep some of the patina down, but there's plenty on there and we'll have to take all that off. Now we're gonna go put it in the liquid nitrogen uh, to cryo it overnight, and we'll finish this thing up in the morning. And we buy uh, liquid nitrogen 20 liters at a time. It's actually a 30 liter Duar. Uh, they use them in agriculture for uh, semen, different things like that. Got it on eBay for a couple hundred bucks. You can get liquid nitrogen from uh, most welding gas supply places. Now, it didn't come with a cap, so I have a fancy foam thing. I built this box, this insulated box. It looks hideous, but it works. It adds about two to three weeks life um, when we get one of these tanks filled up. So it's worth doing. And you just suspend it on wire and hope it doesn't crack. I've never had one crack. I've had one tip uh, pop off, but that was because I dropped it too thick. And so we just drop it in and get it in there. And I can hear it bubbling and doing all that. And uh, we'll come back in the morning, pull that out. Uh, with this recipe that we're using, we uh, went to 1440, held for 10 minutes, took it to 1950, held it for 30 minutes, then straight into the cryo. And uh, we should come out around 64, 63 RC. We'll temper it twice at 450. And we should end up right around 59 to 60 and a half on the RC. So that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow.